Hey guys, it's Justin here with TechBusters IT Solutions. This week we want to introduce to you the sysinternals tools we use for Windows. But before we begin, let's talk about what sysinternals is. Sysinternals is the Microsoft owned repository of troubleshooting utilities that are free for the Windows environment. Now there are numerous tools included in the sysinternals suite and for this video series we want to talk about our top 10 most used and most helpful tools in sysinternals and how to use them. Stay tuned. All right, guys, before we get into all that and get into our top 10 most useful tools inside Sysinternals, first you got to have Sysinternals downloaded on your machine. So head over to technet.microsoft.com, type in Sysinternal Suite in the search bar up here, and click Download Sysinternal Suite. Uh, once you download it, you'll have Sysinternals installed. Just make sure you note the directory that it's installed at. So before we move on, I do want to talk about our top 10 um, sysinternals tools. As you can see, they're all listed down here. But our top 10 would be PSList, PSKill, Process Explorer, ZoomIt, PSLogdon, AutoRuns, Contig, Disk to VHD, MoveFile, PSFile, and Sync. Um, those are the top 10 most used tools that our techs use here at TechBusters. Especially when, uh, when you know, when they're working on a Windows machine or a Windows server, they are definitely using most of these tools. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna we're mainly gonna talk about PS List. What I've got pulled up here is the uh, the actual sysinternal suite um, that's been downloaded on my machine. As you can tell, there are numerous tools inside the sysinternal suite, and like I said, today we're gonna talk about PS List. So of course, all the sysinternals tools, most of them, are used through the command line. It uh, allows for easy, easy ease of use um, and, and, and quick access, really. And it's not too much of a resource hog when you're working on servers and, and, and things of that nature. Um, so the first thing you need to do when we're, we're talking about PS list is uh, pull up command prompt and make sure that you are navigated to the correct directory that your sysinternal suite's installed. The only thing you need to do to run PS uh, PSList is type in PSList, and it pulls it up for you. So what you're looking at is all the processes that are currently running on my machine. Um, PSList works in mixed installation environments and provide process details. And uh, PSList does not require you to be running in an administrator account, so you can run this on any account that's running on a PC you're troubleshooting or working on. So it dumps a list of the running processes on the system um, and includes a few statistics for each one. Um, starting here on the left with PID, we'll, we'll actually start with this, the name of the process. Then you have the process ID. Then you have uh, the priority class, the number of threads it's using, the number of handles, the private virtual memory that's been allocated to the particular process. Um, you're also looking at the amount of CPU time that's been consumed and the time running. Um, in addition to this view, there are a couple uh, switches that we like to use. We like to use dash M, dash D, and dash X. In order to do that, all you got to do is do a dash M, hit enter, and it pulls up. Now, as you can tell, these numbers and the uh, columns are actually named differently. What Dash M does, it shows you the, vis the physical and virtual memory details for each of the running processes. This can help you identify processes that are leaking memory, consuming too much memory, or not releasing the memory correctly. So in the VM column, that's your virtual memory that's been allocated, and this is your working set. And of course, these are you know the same thing we were talking about. You've got your faults, your PID number, and your process ID. Um, this is very, very useful when you're trying to identify a, um, you know, a system that's, you know, acting kind of finicky. Um, you can go out here and look at memory details for each of the processes, and uh, you can also kill it. And we'll, we'll go over that in the next video on how to kill processes. Another switch we use is the dash D switch. So we'll pull up, give that a minute to run. What dash D is, it's giving you details on the threads running within a process, and uh, it gives you the current state. So what you can do here is you, we're looking at, uh, I'll just use this for example, this is a, a Chrome process that's running, and inside the, this process there are different, uh, different threads that are running within the process, and it gives you uh, the state, whether it's running, um, 
down in a queue and a wait state the how, how long it's been up with the user time and the elapsed time so the total time on the CPU it's been up and then you've got your thread ID as well and the last uh, switch that we use is the dash X switch and that pretty much uh, give, shows you the memory and thread detail along with the list of the running processes like we've seen above. It's pretty much an all-encompassing switch. Um, hardly ever do we use this switch. Um, we mainly use the dash M and the dash D. We do use dash X if we want to show the you know the client or the customer the entire uh, you know what's going on and everything. All right, guys, that's it this week. Um, next week, we'll talk about PS kill. So we'll learn how to kill processes remotely or quickly through command prompt. Um, so see you guys next week. Thanks.